Alright, so the opponent did resign. We can go over the game and see how we did. I'll play a slower game and uh, explain my moves. So, like I said, the pawn can move two squares. His pawn uh, went straight up and is now attacking my pawn. So I can either capture it or defend it or do nothing. I'm going to choose to capture it. Instead of capturing back with his queen, which he could have, he decided to attack my pawn with this pawn. In which case, we have no self-control and we take again. So now we are up a pawn. So like I said earlier, controlling these four squares is very important. So his two pawns are now gone. Those are center pawns. Center pawns you do not want to lose. So we're going to open up this bishop and this queen by moving this pawn. He will attack my pawn. So now he's got two attackers. I only have one defender. So if, if we don't want to lose material, we do have to defend that piece while defending this pawn with this piece. He cannot profitably take because I have an equal amount of defenders as he has attackers. He who strikes first when it's equal like that will lose material. The only way you gain material is if you have one more attacker than they have defenders. So he's given up on attacking this because he doesn't have any other pieces to attack it with. If he goes here, I will simply take his bishop. And yes, he could take my queen, but then I take his queen. So he is going to move this pawn for whatever reason. And um, we want to be able to castle as soon as possible. So we will put our bishop here so that we can castle on the next move. Castling is when you move your king two spaces and then the rook goes on the other side of the king. Um, there cannot be any pieces in the middle of it, obviously, and you cannot be in check or a square that you're uh, crossing over with the king cannot be occupied by a piece either, or being attacked by a piece, rather. So he is also trying to castle, moving his knight here, developing a piece, so we will castle. Any questions? So now he is thinking about how to where he wants his bishop to be. Here, 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 or yeah, those are really his only options. So I explained it pretty well. That's good. So this bishop is going to go to either one of these three squares. When he does. Um, if he goes here, I'm probably going to push my pawn up and then he's probably going to go back here and then I push my other pawn up and then he goes back here. So he's probably going to go to one of these two squares with this bishop and then, uh, if he does, I'm probably just going to push this pawn up so that I can develop this knight and then my knight is not in the way of my pawn from advancing up the board. That will give me a stronger center here because we do want to control these squares. Um, he has this square, this square, and this square covered with his pieces. And I only have this square covered, but I'm attacking this square. So really, he has these two squares, and I have these two squares. If we can control that center the whole game, we pretty much win. So he did opt to go there, which means that this knight doesn't really need to be protecting anymore because he just blocked the protection of this pawn. Either way, we are going to move. Um, whenever a piece hits, attacks two pieces at the same time, it is called a fork. Um, 
So that's what I'm planning on doing on the next move here. With my pawn attacking both of those pieces. And pawns are only worth one, whereas these are worth three. So a, a, a pawn push here attacking these, even if he takes with the, the bishop, I take back with the pawn and then he takes with the knight. We're also gonna win the knight because, um, actually no, that would be a blunder. So I don't know if you followed that whole situation, but then he can come here with check. And then my piece is just hanging in the middle of the board right here. So he did see the, the, the fort coming in. So he did decide to move that bishop. So we are just going to develop our piece like we had intended to do to begin with. It just so happened to be nice that we had that fork opportunity also. So it did kind of develop my my pawn got it to the center of the board while freeing up the knight and threatened a, a fork so that was a, a very good move here by going c4 it's very explosive when you go c4 <laughs> um so now um whenever you're going to fight somebody you know you're not gonna just go into a fight with uh by yourself you know you're gonna call your friends see if they can help you and um that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna see if we can get the whole crew involved in this attack. So uh, the, the king is gonna stay back here and um, be protected by these guys. But we wanna get every other piece involved in this battle. So we have to ask this bishop, where do you wanna be when you grow up? And he's probably gonna tell us he wants to be here, but there's no way to be there because this is protecting it. So we have to kind of develop a plan to see how we can get this bishop here. Because if the bishop's here, it has all of these squares um, that it's uh, attacking. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11-ish that's like the the ideal spot for your bishop so um how are we going to get him there it's it's going to be tough um you're not supposed to move the same piece twice in the opening but i do want this square for my bishop really bad so we're going to move our knight here and hit his bishop so that we can bring our bishop here and that that's all chess really is you're 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 trying to maneuver your pieces to control as many squares as possible while maintaining center control um the the reason the center is so important is because your pieces when they're in the center have more uh flexibility and they're controlling more squares so like right now, my bishop can only go one, two, three, four, five squares. Once the bishop ends up here, that five turns into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Once uh, pawns are out of the way, so obviously that's a that's a big difference when you're when you're talking about what's what's being controlled versus what could be controlled. And if I take here and he takes back with the queen, now we can push our pawn up um, and then put our bishop here because the pawn will be protecting the bishop and the queen will be getting hit and the queen will have to retreat somewhere. Okay. That's a weird move. And now that we know that we we want to do what we want to do, okay. So he wants to put it, he want he likes cheap thrills here. He wants to come in here so that this only has one square to go. He goes there. Then he probably wants to go here, hit my queen, and have his bishop be hitting here. So, um, we gotta we gotta stop that plan from happening somehow. I don't really see anything clear to do that. 
So we're just going to go with plan A and ignore his. So he takes back with the pawn. Now we can go here. If he comes here, we can just push our bit, our, our rook up there and then uh, we'll be okay. So we're gonna attack his knight. He's probably not gonna go here now because it just doesn't make sense. He does decide to go there anyway. We go here, and now his his knight is trapped because because I'm gonna I'm gonna go here on the next move. He has no no squares to go to with his knight that bring him in a position where um, he can't be attacked. So this knight can only go to these squares right here, and all of those are protected by my pieces. So he did just trap his knight. He is going to try to play some kind of desperate move, like probably capturing this pawn, even though it gets immediately recaptured by my knight or my queen. So while he figures out how much trouble he just got himself into, I am going to take a leak because I have been drinking too much water today. I'll be right back. Make sure to wash. Yeah, right. Ain't nobody got time for that. Um... I, I really never understood why people wash their hands after they pee. I feel like you should wash your hands before you pee. Because, like, my my junk doesn't touch anything <laughs> the whole day. Um, all right, so if I go here now. But my hands touch everything, you know. I, I can't go here now because his queen is protecting this. So if, if, if I do that. He can take here. Um, I can take with my knight. He takes with his queen. But then I win as bishop at the end. So I guess this does work. So we're going to go there. Now, if I piss on my hands, then yes, I will wash them, obviously. But So, he's calculating taking here. I take back. Um, but it's not going to work because, like I said, every piece that... Or every square that he can go to is capturable. So, this, this knight is toast. And now the bishop is hanging. So chess fox 222 did dig himself into a foxhole. <laughs> and Tam Bam, I, I do want to thank you for coming in here because uh, you saying you don't know anything or never understood chess did make me over explain my moves. And I feel like that's exactly what this channel needs is for me to over explain my moves. Cause I, I do have a habit of sitting here and being silent for the whole game. So thank you for, uh, for coming in here today. And now I actually might have content for YouTube, YouTube say hello or Twitch say hello to YouTube, YouTube say hello to Twitch. Um, we have Tam Bam 2007 in here. Uh, saying she doesn't understand chess very well. So we are giving her the rundown. Him or her. I don't know why I'm saying her. Tam Bam could be like. Okay. So now this is a good move because now, now he's hitting my rook. Um, but I will take a bishop and a knight for that rook. 
because like I said earlier, the, the pieces are worth three. If he takes this rook, then I can take the knight and I just profited in the exchange. So we take those chat. Now we're up a pawn and a piece ish. And his queen is gonna have to be traded off the board too. So we just force the exchange of queens with that move. Um, I could have just taken his rook. That was that was a, a bad I, I could have been up an exchange again. I could have just won the exchange back. That was a that was a blunder on my end. But I was I was very focused on this queen, so I did get blinded to the fact that I could have just taken that rook. So we're gonna put that bishop back to where it was. And put my bishop on the square that I originally wanted the bishop to be on. So now, now we are hitting this whole board here. You might make a move like this, pushing my bishop back. But a knight on the rim is dim because the knight does not have... Uh, as many squares to go to. So once the knight is here, you can only go back to here. Um, here, here, and here, which is a total of four squares. If you have a knight in the center of the board, however, it has eight squares it can go to. So it just goes back to the, the importance of being able to uh, get your pieces in the center of the board and control the center. So now this, this rook can only go one, two, three, four, five squares. We need to develop it to a spot where it controls more of the board. So moving it here is tempting, but after takes and takes, we're kind of a move behind because then he attacks our knight. But then we can activate our king. So, you know, this actually, this isn't, isn't a terrible move. And then this will be hanging at the end of the variation too. Bring this bishop back. Probably gonna push this up. If not, this is hanging, so he does have to protect that pawn somehow. What's your uh, real name, Tam Bam? Tammy, okay. So now we will take this pawn. I 
This is probably one of the best chess games I've played. If I'm being honest. All right, so now, so he's attacking here. If I go here, I hang mate. So we're going to protect that pawn. Actually, the pawn is not hanging because the bishop is protecting it. But this, this knight does need to get back into the game. So we are going to let him back into the game by moving here. And as you can see, these four squares here in the middle are protected by my pieces more than his pieces. So now we just have to figure out a way to get the king to be checkmated. So stay tuned for how I plan to do that. All right, so he's hitting my bishop. We have two options. We can go here. But then he can take here, I take back, and now this is hanging and he wins that. So we definitely don't wanna do that. In addition to that plan being terrible, this can also be pushed up and I cannot take it because his knight is protecting it. So we have to move this bishop back to here. This knight is protecting this square here. So keeping your pieces active and on your side of the board. It is worth noting your side of the board. Notice how my pieces have not really went up into Black's camp. Why? Because Black's camp has all of his pieces. So when I get in there, all of his pieces are going to gang up on my pieces. And guess what? My pieces are not going to survive. So we slowly march up the board. And now we can start pushing our pawns up. Um, I do want to control this square more. That way when I start pushing this pawn up, he can't go here. So we're going to formulate a plan be able to march that pawn up the board because once that pawn turns into a queen it is much easier to mate a king when you have a queen and that can be taken however you'd like it to be taken <laughs> so now we will just march and march and march up the board So now you can't cut me off here because I could just take it, right? So as long as my bishop is on this diagonal, he's going to have trouble protecting this square from my mating attack. This is what we call a passed pawn too, a pawn that cannot be harassed by another pawn. So there's no pawns on, on this uh, C file or E file. Therefore, this guy can just make it on up. Also, if I was to get a piece, okay, so that was a good move. But now what happens when I do this? If I was to get a piece here or here, like if I could get my knight right here, this would be what's called an outpost because there's no pawns here or here or here to harass that piece. Adu, how's it going? Hydrate, okay. You got it, pal. We are uh, over explaining chess right now. I feel like this is gonna be my uh, my new way of streaming. I'm going over my plan and my opponent's plan as as we go along the game here. And um, it's making for a more interactive stream. 
I like it. I like it a lot. I also made some changes to the stream, in case you haven't noticed. Tammy says, fall winning. Noticed, sunglasses are cheaper. <laughs> All right, now we can take here, he takes back, we take here. And just march. Like it's April, May or June. Not gonna July. Am I down to play again? Yeah, we could do that. We could do that, Adu. Oh, dude, what's your, uh, what's your real name? I'm trying to label everyone in my chat so that I'm not using him, her, they, them. Adomus. Adomus? Adomus. Adomus. It's got to be Adomus. Is it a Dumas? That's my final answer. A Dumas. Adam in English. Okay, we're just going to call you Adam. So he didn't snap take this yet with either piece because guess what? If he takes with the rook, I'm going to I'm going to take this pawn. And if he takes with the pawn, I'm gonna take this pawn with the with the bishop. So you know, USA. We're at we're at in the USA. Georgia, Georgia, Georgia. You know who else is from Georgia? Chess coach Nat. Coach Frank is also from Georgia. We're going to take there. Normally you don't want to stack your bishops like this when they have a rook, but his rook cannot get there immediately. Because the, the king is on uh, in its way. So we don't have to worry about a skewer going on or a, a fork. All right, so the opponent did resign. We can go over the game and see how we did. I played that game very well. <laughs> 